The Annals of the World by Archbishop James Usher. Hi, I'm Steve Waldron, pastor of New Life Pentecostal Church, Albany, Georgia. This is the first edition of the recalibrated Annals of the World. It is so easy to scoff when somebody says, well, you do know James Usher said the foundation of the creation of the world was October 23rd, 4004, nine Greenwich Mean Time or midnight in the Garden of Eden. I'm around apostolics who laugh at that, learned pastors who laugh at that. It is quite another thing to read this incredible genius. You have to remember by the time he was 19, he had already put to flight the leading Jesuit in Ireland. He had already had a debate with him and destroyed him in debate. And so when you see what he used, I think you may have a different view. Even if you disagree with that date, you might have a different view of the information he used to get there. So very well done. You can buy these, you know, not terribly expensive. I've bought them as gifts, given them out to many, many people before. Has a good little gold ribbon marker, gold edging, put out by Master Books. So again, let's take a quick look, or maybe not so quick look on the inside of this thing. I got a ton of notes written in here. This was the first edition, October 2003. Editor's preface. Here's an extract from Usher's epitaph. Historian, literary critic, theologian, among saints, most scholarly, among scholars, most saintly. And he goes into how they arrived at that. That the earth, January 1st, 2001, the earth would have been around for 2,452,142 days or the Julian period, 6,714 days. So then it has Usher's epistle to the reader, which is fantastic because he goes in, let me just read just a little bit to you. It says, like, therefore Ptolemy from his book, Astronomical Calculations Concerning the Creation and History of the World, stated that this is beyond the knowledge of man. And then he, he quotes Julius Maternus Firmicus. We're going to look at all the quotes from the Loeb Classical Library that, uh, of course, the Loeb Classical Library wasn't invented, but he used these uh, scholarly quotations. Dionysius Batavius, even among Christians, the most renowned chronographer, Dionysius Batavius, Lactonius Fermanius, Philastratus Brixinius. And so you see he marshals all the learning that was available in the ancient world. And this is how he comes up with this, uh, with this date. And so, one Anno Monday from the creation of the world, 710 Julian period, 4004 BC. It even has uh, James A. Garfield, Many Thoughts of Many Minds by Klopsch, The World's History is a Divine Poem, which the history of every nation is a canto and every man is a word. Now that was from a president. I wish we had presidents talking like that today. It's strange. I think Garfield was the guy who could write with both hands simultaneously in Greek or something, though. His strains have been peeling along down the centuries, and though there have been mingled discords of warring canon and dying men, yet to the Christian philosopher and historian, the humble listener, there's been a divine melody running through the song which speaks of hope and halcyon days to come. So he goes into the sixth day, like the fifth day, Thursday, October 27th. The sixth day, Friday, October 28th. Oh, no. Now, some people would say he actually came to the conclusion that creation was at nightfall, October 22nd, 4004 BC, but he just follows the chronologies. And so, I'll give you a little look how this looks on the inside. And it's a massive tome. So, you can scoff at his findings, but just even to determine the 4004 date was over 100 pages in Latin of discerning from ancient learning astronomy. Now, people like Isaac Newton would have said generally what he said was correct, as would almost all the scientists of the age that gave us the, uh, the things we have today. So, you know, this isn't as far-fetched as you may think. 
And he's constantly quoting uh, simultaneous history and bringing it in as well. So he's got the Exodus at about 1491. So the fifth age of the world starting in 1012 BC will show you. It's very well illustrated. Now this was done by a husband and wife couple. I know he was a teacher up in Canada in the 1970s, 80s, maybe into the 90s, and he retired to devote more time and to read their epistle, the dedication they had to do this. I think this was a four-year project by two very learned people. The Annals of the World by Archbishop Usher. You come to the back. He goes into, you know, the Passion Week, 33 A.D. Things that happened at the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 A.D. When he feels like John the Baptist was born. When he feels like, through evidence, when Jesus was born. And so it just has all kind of neat stuff in here. Fantastic stuff. And when you get to the back, and the page numbers aren't numbered. Oh, yeah, they are. Here's one, 850. And so this was not, he wrote, I think, uh, a lot of books, but I don't remember how many right now. This is how many people died at the Siege of Jerusalem, 1,337,490. Now here is a list of the authors cited. List of the authors cited. Most people don't even know these historians and scientists of the ancient world existed. Look at this. This is a monument of scholarship. It's only because we're fallen, living in an antichrist generation, that we would think this guy didn't know anything. And so just an enormous amount of authors that were quoted, and then appendices. Now Floyd Nolan Jones has come out with kind of a supplement to this, that Warren Wearsby recommends that is absolutely tremendous. It's got differences between the Hebrew and the LXX text, Septuagint, Evidentialism, the Bible and Assyrian chronology, uh, some objections considered, maps, the cedar alom Raba, why Jewish dating is different, archaeology in the Bible by Philip Clymer, so you get a lot in here, and then it actually has like an appendix, a glossary that you can look up certain things in here. So the Annals of the World by Archbishop Usher, I'd recommend it. Even if you're an evolutionist and you think everything's 15.2 billion, 14, whatever the flavor of the month is that you say, you need to read it because you'd be impressed with the scholarship. God bless you. Love you in Jesus.